Let's go down to Tampa right now. We're going to talk with Greg Allman, who uh, covers the Tampa Bay Bucks for The Athletic. Greg, thanks for spending a few minutes. How are you? Hey, doing well, guys. Hope you are, too. All right. Uh, give me the uh, the reasoning behind uh, the uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers bringing in Leonard Fournette. And uh, if you do have uh, any of the, the contract details uh, of this signing. Yeah, I think, as was the case with, with Gronk and with uh, LaShawn McCoy here, they're just trying to assemble as much talent as possible around Tom Brady. I, mean, I think there's certainly a, a win-now mentality with a 43-year-old quarterback and a 67-year-old head coach. Um, and again, they... they you know, I think most people thought they had a pretty good running game situation without uh, Fournette coming in, just with uh, you know with Ronald Jones back here uh, drafting uh, two backs in April and adding LeSean McCoy. But again, just adding somebody in here. As far as the the financials, um, we haven't seen it yet, just because they've only agreed to terms. But the initial reports were a two million dollar base salary that can be as much as three and a half million with incentive, uh, just a one year deal. So he'll be an unrestricted free agent in the spring. Greg, when you look at the running back room, we were talking about it in the first block of the show. It looks like a stable right now. You mentioned LaShawn McCoy, and you mentioned Jones as well. You add Fournette to that. Keyshawn Vaughn's a guy I think a lot of covering him in the SEC. So what do you yeah. think that final roster looks like? Because if I'm not mistaken, the special teams captain or one of the special teams war daddies was a running back from a year ago as well, and you're not going to keep five backs. Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible to keep five backs. It's not traditional, like you say. Um, that, that fifth guy's a guy named Daria Gunbawale, who was kind of a third down pass catching back and get 35 catches last year, but didn't really run the ball very much. Um, but he is their special teams captain, had 300 snaps on special teams last year and isn't likely to get cut. You, you could keep him and not really think of him as a back at all. He, he would count towards that total. But Bruce said today, I think he carried five in the past. Um, you know, I think they've marginalized Keyshawn Vaughn a fair amount in adding these back. So I think if you kept him, it would be probably knowing that Keyshawn Vaughn is going to be inactive a lot of Sundays if he's got – Jones and McCoy and Fournette all ahead of him and fighting for carry. So uh, you don't need to dress five by any means. But I think given the talent they have, there's just definitely a window where they could keep five and, and manage and just be a little lighter in another position. Greg Allman from The Athletic is our guest. Greg, if you had to summarize this roster, where would you say the biggest concerns are a week before the opener? Yeah, there's definitely some depth concerns. I mean, I feel like their starters on both sides are pretty solid. Um, they're not very well insulated against injury. At outside linebacker, uh, at, at cornerback, uh, they have three corners they like a lot, but if any of them got hurt, uh, there'd, there'd be a guy that people would probably throw at, I think. Uh, definitely an unproven cornerback on the field at that point. Outside linebacker, again, two great guys in Shaq Barrett and Jason Pierre-Paul. Everybody else on the roster behind them, I think, has eight career tackles total. So just very young, very unproven there. I had thought they might bring in a veteran, get a Clay Matthews type or something like that. But they haven't, so they clearly like the young guys they have. How's the growth of Devin White been? Because this is a guy, obviously, we think a lot of here in Baton Rouge. We saw him. I know he missed a couple of games with injury, but when he was on the field, he was a difference maker. I've got to imagine he's going to take an even bigger role and look to be a leader on that defense, even though he is a young player. Yeah, we just got Devin on a Zoom this morning. Um, such an enthusiastic energy guy. Uh, really easy to, to like what he brings in terms of just a, a young leadership on his defense. Um, as you mentioned, really came into his own in the last five games last season. Had, I think, four fumble recoveries, two touchdowns, his first pick, uh, forced fumble. Um, basically had a good rookie year in about five weeks. Um, and I think as he gets more comfortable, this is a complicated defense to be in the middle of as a 21-year-old. So I think being in year two, having some fluency and some understanding of what's going on around him will really help them. I think that's going to let them uh, open things up, be more kind of more creative and more deceptive in their look. They're probably going to blitz them. I mean, he and Levante David are both really fast linebackers. So the idea of being able to blitz them up the middle and get a lot of different looks, I think you'll see a real emergence of Devin White on the national level this year. Greg Allman is our guest from The Athletic. Greg, in his uh, final campaign with the uh, the Patriots, we came to think of Rob Gronkowski as a 29-year-old and a 39-year-old's body with uh, a, a year off to, in his words, remake that body. We think of him as an old guy. He's only 31. What kind of shape is he in and what kind of camp has he had? Yeah, a good one. Um, and has looked fine. I, mean, I don't think they've overwhelmed him in terms of reps, in terms of usage. I don't think they will. Um, but I think it, what you have to do is you have to decide whether the rust of a year off 
is going to affect him as much as just being as healthy as he's probably been since like 2016. I mean, he had such a laundry list of injuries he dealt with, uh, especially when your back is a problem that can really be taxing. So uh, I think just getting out of the grind of the NFL for a year, it, it looked like he really kept himself in good shape. I think he's pretty close in weight to where he was. Um, I don't think he needs to be a guy that plays 50 snaps in a 60 snap game. Uh, I think it's probably more important that they preserve him and have him ready to where if they get to January and are playing in the playoffs, that that's when he and Brady can really be a difference. Um, so I, I think, like I said, I think it wouldn't be surprising if, if they ease off on what we've known him to be to help the likelihood of him being healthy and, and ready to contribute in January. Greg, it's one of the most talented tight end rooms, maybe the most talented in the NFL when you look at it on paper. Uh, can you see a scenario where you run that 12 personnel with O.J. Howard on the field with Gronk? And you could even go 13 personnel. I know the Oakland Raiders did it a year ago with all of their tight ends. Cameron Brate's a guy that's had a lot of experience and a lot of success in the NFL as well. How much do you think we could see at least two of those guys on the field at the same time? Yeah, no, absolutely. They, they ran 14 on the goal line the other day uh, with four <laughs> tight ends. As a former um, fullback, I love to hear that. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's um. So, yeah, I think 12, I mean, we're in last year, I think, Three wide was probably their base personnel, maybe 60% of the time. Um, they're probably not as good at third receiver as they were with Rashad Perriman last year. And like you said, I, I just think as a base package, to have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and Rob Gronkowski and O.J. Howard all lining up pass eligible, first of all, you can run out of that formation pretty well. Yeah. They're all really good blockers. Um, and again, it, there's so many wide open for the defense to, to not account for. And you got probably the best quarterback you could ask for to find that mismatch and that opening in, in Tom Brady. So I think you'll see a lot of two tight ends and, and different combinations too. Cam Brady is their third tight end. He's fourth in the NFL in touchdowns in the last five years. You got 27 scores. So like you said, it, it's uh, a gluttony of, of talent and depth at the tight end position. Greg Allman, thank you for spending some time with us today. Buccaneers uh, writer for The Athletic. Going to be a, a very uh, welcome start to the season, Brady and Breeze, uh, in the Superdome a week from Sunday. We'll look forward to that. Thanks a lot. Hey, guys, take care. Thanks again. Stay safe.